For those who are wanting to find love in the Philippines, this may be a stereotype, but this is like something that some of the Filipinas have at the back of their mind. When they see an American, they they have this um, stereotype wherein, oh, he's kind of used to getting what he wants overnight. And so maybe when you initially meet them, the Filipinas wall is up. Because they're thinking, oh, maybe like he's expecting to kiss on the first date. Maybe he's expecting to sleep with like on the third date. And so I would suggest for you to kind of give her like that space and make her feel that I'm willing to wait. I'm willing to wait until you warm up. I'm not like a hit. I'm not a hit and run. Hello, welcome to the Asian Dating Podcast. I help single women just like you go from frustrated with dating to having a positive, unfair advantage dating strategy. So no matter if if you're experienced with dating or new to dating, I would love to help you out. Today, I have a very special guest. Vanessa Antonio's life mission is to make finding love easy for people. Being the only Filipina matchmaker in the Philippines to be certified by a relationship sciences school in New York City, we call her Coach V or V. And I know V has had a master's degree in sociology and has almost like 10 years of experience with this. So welcome to the show. How are you, V? Hi, May. Thank you very much for having me in your show. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yes, yes. I know we've connected for many, many years now, and we've collaborated, and we know a lot of mutual people. And thank you so much for waking up early, because I know it's like 6 a.m. for you and 4 p.m. for me. But yeah, I've always been, you know, wanting to go to the Philippines. I've never been there, but I love dried mangoes. I love all the food, like is it synagogue soup. I used to have a Filipina roommate and I would just love the food, you know, the language I don't know, but I have a lot of Filipina friends. So tell me a little bit about how you got started and what motivated you to become a matchmaker there. All right. Thank you, May. It sounds like you know a lot of, about the Filipina um, culture already. Yes, you're right. It's sinigang. It's that sour soup that it's known in the Philippines. So um, talking about my experience as a matchmaker, I started my company, Singles Events Manila. Um, our life mission and our company mission is to make finding love easy because personally, it does not make sense to me to like meet someone who wants to find love and like is having a hard time to find love. I mean, love is supposed to be like is free, right? It's supposed to be something that should be given to those people who wants to find it and sincere about it. And so um, when I was 24, I am one of those people who really wants to find that someone. But I was wondering how come I'm already 24. I've never had an experience like, you know, having a significant other, not even like having someone to kind of flirt with and have a relationship with. So I was like, there's something terribly wrong in here. So besides my grandma telling me not to be in a relationship at 24, I feel like I don't have the network to meet like the, the single professionals that I want to meet right so by the time I'm already working and so we attended this speed dating event with my friends and to cut the long story short we feel like oh it's just an hour of just sitting down and talking we did not feel connected with the singles that we've met so we've come up with an idea of creating an event that will make the talking less but like the interaction more so just imagine a team building that's going to happen in a in a in a dating event. So the purpose of that event is to break physical connection, to laugh together and to make memories in such a short time so that when you start to sit down and talk to each other, you have things to talk about other than what you do, how much you earn, where you live, all those um, things, right? So um, we started that as an events company. And then after just after less than like a year, we've been seeing couples like naturally, you know, um, finding each other in those events. And I thought, why not do this professionally? And so I'm one of those girls who dreamt to be a matchmaker. But I was like, how can I make this a profession? Like there is... Um, no way that I can go to New York because I've seen Matchmaking Institute and I was like, I want to be in that school. But like as a Filipina who's who's um, from this part of the world, I was like, how can I go there? Like it must be too expensive and all that. But lo and behold, after like two, two to three years of that 
of dreaming for like to study in New York. I've had an opportunity to work as a research analyst in the United States. And so when I work as a research analyst, I made sure that I'll be able to take the certification course when I was there. And so I did. So after that, it was right during the pandemic that I've got the certification. And one of the major network here in the Philippines was looking for a host for their dating show. So they started the brand Coach V. And that's when I start um, doing like giving free dating tips um, for that show on for that network online. And um, because of the certification also, that really helped me um, build my credibility as a matchmaker. That's why the coaching also was launched. There's a lot of people who've been who has been um, help in terms of what to do in dating because usually may like in the Philippines and um, for sure in other parts of the world when somebody is having like a difficult time in dating they would run to their family members or friends who by the way most of them are singles too and so we they get advice from like very individual experience and I thought like your chances of of making a good decision, an informed decision, would be higher if we listen to who we call um, the people, the people scientists, social scientists. So these are the psychologists, sociologists. And so I was like, don't listen based on my personal experience, because by the time I've only had one relationship, I think that you'll be way successful in dating if you listen to these people who are like psychologists, sociologists. These are the people who has been um, studying human behavior. And so that has been my approach for for the past um, eight years that we've been um, at least five years that we've been doing this um, dating. And that has been my my promise to the clients that I have. So we're combining not only like personal experience, local experience in the Philippines, but also like um, studies that has been done not only in Asia, but in Western countries as well. So that has been like my my story to to cut the story short. <laughs> No, I love it. So you're saying that you used to have activities for single people and then these activities help them bond and then they sit down and get to know each other. Is that how it worked? Absolutely. You are yeah. right. So instead of just putting them in, in a chair and talk without any um, common ground, we put them in a series of activities so that they find common ground. They find like um, times wherein they can share a laughter. And then after, it's way easier to connect when you have that, when you have built that connection prior to, to sitting down and talking. I love it. I love it. So how would you suggest someone coming to the Philippines to meet single people now? Do you suggest that they do apps, they just go and do activities, or do they sign up with you like what would the average American guy what should he do when he wants to meet someone from the Philippines right so so um, besides of course working with with Filipinos we have worked a lot with with Americans and Europeans who would like to try their luck in dating in the Philippines and as I have um, briefly mentioned to you, um, how we help um, these um, foreign nationals who'd like to, who's moving to the Philippines or working in the Philippines, find love, is we coach them about the Philippine dating culture. Because as human beings, we have a lot of similarities when it comes to, you know, approaching dating. But there are also like cultural differences that um, we, like, we are better off learning before we enter a certain country. So, so. I think that app is a is a great way to meet people just like because you just entered here, you don't have network, but the best way to really connect with people and really like potentially find that significant other is through in-person interaction. And so um, Philippines is big on events. That's why um, so far we are the only um, events company who's doing lots and lots of events and consistently for singles. But also um, if that person loves to attend so Socials, I think that being part of a group is way better than you going to a bar and like randomly hitting on strangers. So when you are part of a group, you have some sort of like a community who who can um, some sort of like recommend you or promote you, right? Than you like promoting yourself to a lady. So just imagine me if if um, there's this guy who 
who just entered the Philippines and he tells me like, hey, I do this, I do that, I'm a good guy, I'm blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, noted. Compared to somebody else's tell me, hey, this is my this is my friend, this is my colleague, and he does this, this, he's a good guy and everything. So I feel like um, if you have that kind of like some sort of like a vouching system, your your success is higher than you promoting yourself. And that being said, that like is connected with the Filipino culture, wherein the trust is kind of like slow to warm up, right? Unlike in, in other countries, wherein it's very, it's very, very common to like uh, meet or date strangers, here like the the ladies are kind of even if some of us has been westernized already like a lot of us are like slow to warm up and like scary cat because the, the trust is a very important factor here we need people to vouch on you that's why we recommend also like going on coaching session on how to date like and learning about the the filipino dating culture and at the same time just joining events wherein you get to speak with a matchmaker you get to speak with the organizer and you have people who can help um, vouch your identity and how you are as a person so that when you meet someone it's like way easier to connect with them because the, there's the trust factor so you can focus on connecting with them emotionally as well are you saying that Filipina, the women are more trusting if a friend introduced them to a certain guy versus them just meeting a guy on their own? So it's nice if you can edify somebody and say, yeah, this is a great guy. I met him through this, this, and this. And now you introduce them. And then now her guard is not as, you know, not up and, you know, she's more willing to meet with him then. May you got it a hundred percent. So that because um the the culture here is like you know very community, very like and of course human nature. Like we tend to trust the familiar, and so if you're a total stranger, like I may go on a date with you, but like really I have like if if that woman is like a a woman who is kind of like responsible in her dating life, there is so many vetting and research to do. And um, as a person who has a, a research background, I would highly recommend women who are like dating, either you're dating a Filipino or a foreign national to do their due diligence even before they go on dates. So yes, the trust factor is a big thing. Um, and having somebody to, to vouch you will make your journey in the Philippines easier. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So what are some things that um, a foreigner should know if they go to the Philippines and date? Like what are some cultural differences or some key factors that they should know just doing the everyday dating thing? Okay. So one of the things that um, they should know is that even if the woman looks like they don't like you, they may still like you. We're just not used to saying I love you too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, elaborate a little bit on that. Okay. So so in the Philippines, we have this, we have this um unfortunate culture of like the the you know playing to playing hard to get because our parents told us growing up that you know when you let the man work for you for a long time that will make them like a, like a better match than you like saying yes the moment that they ask you to be their girlfriend. So we'd like to give like our, our potential dates a hard time. And we have like, we have this big dating, like courting culture. So again, even if like for, for a woman like me who have worked and have, was exposed to the Western culture, the moment that you get back to the Philippines, we still have that, yeah, you that person got to court me. He, not only me, and this is a big thing for those who want to date in the Philippines, you only not going to court me. You got to court my friends and my family as well, because this is what I was talking about, about the vouching system. If you court my friends and my family and they vouch for you, even if I'm I'm slow to warm up, when the people who 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 I trust tells me that hey, you know, you gotta give this guy a chance, I am likely to give you a like a better chance if my family and my friends loves you. Okay, so if your family and friends approve of him, then yes. you're more likely to take your advice from your friends and family and give this guy a chance. Interesting. Okay, so are you saying that the hard to get culture? hard to get 
phenomenon started in the Philippines? Like you guys are the ones who started this hard to get stuff in the U.S. <laughs> I feel like uh, we we have that, um, like all of us have that hard to get like um, theory in our minds. Like, but the Philippines, I feel like at least those women who's really finding love, who wants to be married and have a family, they still have that in their hearts. It's really because of, of how they were raised. Like when when you're dating someone who loves their grandparents, imagine like that grandparent have already told that person hey even if you really like the guy don't tell them you like them on a first date second date third date give them like a hard time because a may traditionally in the philippines when when a guy really likes the girl the guy goes to the to the girl's backyard and we have this you know like the chopping of the woods like that guy has to render like physical work for the family of that girl that they like back in the days, right? So right now you don't have to chop woods, but that that um, kind of courting culture has evolved and still women are looking for that in the potential mate. Because imagine me, like we also like to, to talk a lot with our girlfriends, right? And so one of the top questions that the girlfriends would ask you, so like, what has he had done for you? What has he done for your family? Oh, he did this, he did this, he like... So it's really that like, what what has the guy um, have shown you to exhibit that they really like you? So I like you is not enough, but doing your actions, rendering service and kind of like, you know, um, wooing your family and friends is such a big thing. And that's something that I would recommend for, for um, Americans or Europeans who wants to find someone to marry in the Philippines. If you really like a girl, the best way is to kind of court the people who they really, really love on top of courting the person instead, okay. on top of courting the person herself. So would you say that these um, traditions or rules of dating also apply to Filipino men? Like, would you say that the men in the Philippines also have to court the family, her family to like, it applies to them as well, not just foreigners? A hundred percent. So okay. if, if it applies to the to foreigners, the more it applies to the Filipino, because the understanding is, hey, you know our culture, right? So this is kind of like the expectation is, you know how it is. But yeah. like if we if we date like a, a foreign national, and by the way, um, um, May, I'm going to share with you this term. This is like an internal term that Filipinas call um, foreigners who are good looking in the Philippines. Okay. okay. Um, they call them a fam. And foreigners do not know this, that Filipinos call them this, a fam. So a fam stands for a Filipi uh, a foreigner assigned in Manila. A fam, all right? Oh, A-F-A-M. Yes. Okay. But if you hear if you heard a Filipina calls a certain foreigner a fam, it means that they look good and they're they're like yummy. Something oh, like that. <laughs> okay. So it's so, a good thing. It's a compliment. It's a good thing, yes. But but again, the foreigners will not know this know this because this is like a local, this is like a term that Filipinos are using towards like the crushes, the non-Filipino crushes that they have. And so there's a big afam culture that's happening here, meaning may a lot of Filipinas are open to finding love with a non-Filipino. So I'm just I'm just saying that if you are if you want to come to the Philippines to find love, you have a big, big chance because like Filipinas are opening despite their, their you know, the trust factor. They're opening up to dating non-Filipinos as well. Would you say that a woman, a Filipina, would you say 50% of them are open to meeting a foreign man in Philippines? Or would you say there's a smaller percentage, like 25%? Like, how do I know which Filipinas are interested in meeting a Caucasian man, you know, like, cause I know in China, the Asian women there love a British guy. They love British accent. So I was wondering like, is there a certain Filipinas population that really likes Caucasian men as well? Right. So um, the capital of the Philippines is Manila and Manila is where you can find a lot of like women who 
who, of course, not only career driven, um, a lot of them are educated because they come to the city to kind of like find a really good job. But ironically, it's not only those people who are who kind of like studied in, in big universities and was able to travel that are open to finding like a non-Filipino um, husband, right? So there's a lot also, a lot of women in the province who kind of like wants to fall in love with non-Filipinos. Why? Because it has been in our culture to kind of look up to America and like at this level, like when you, for example, let's just talk about like, someone like a Filipina or a Filipino who have studied abroad, the moment that they come back to the Philippines, they'll be like, wow, superstar. So there's that respect and love and admiration for the American culture. And this may be rooted to like, uh, you know, thousands of thousands of years ago um, history. But yeah, there's just natural admiration for people coming from America. And um, so when you find, so you mentioned about in Hong Kong, like they really appreciate like British men, right? The the Filipina, a portion of them really appreciates um, the Americans because the notion is whether it's true or not, the notion is if they're coming from America, they're educated, they're like... Um, um, straightforward. Some Filipinas would say, you know, I'm so tired of Filipino men like meeting around a bush because that's just our culture. We want someone who's just going to straight up tell us if they like us, if they want to, you know, make a family or so they feel like meeting an American is like a breath of fresh air wherein you you're just like you're just like very straight up with your intention, straight forward with your intention. So that's one of the traits that they're looking for, but also the obvious. And this is not, this is no longer a secret, right? Like imagine like a Filipina ending up with a, with, for example, an American husband. I mean, just look at their babies. So, so, you know, we have like Miss Universe, like joining. So this may not be the best reason to kind of find love from the other side of the world. But this is the rea reality that kind of some women are already thinking about what are my babies going to look like if I end up with someone who's not from the from my country, right? So there's a lot of um, consideration, but um, some of the some of the considerations are those that I mentioned, May. I loved mixed babies. <laughs> I just love they're so cute. I, I can totally see that. Like if I were to have kids, I would totally want to marry a Caucasian man and have mixed babies. And my husband is white. He is, uh, you know, has a German background and all that. And yeah, we would have cute babies, you know, he's like six, one, six, two, and I'm five, six. And, but seriously, it's not the height that made me attracted to him. You know, like he would be still an amazing man if he was five six which I have dated guys who are five six so but yeah I I do love mixed babies I can't I can't argue with that and also may like based on science they have like stronger genetics I'm not sure if you've heard about that but I was like oh really like having like mixed um mixed babies or like they have stronger genetics I was like okay that's interesting <laughs> not to say that you shouldn't marry that you shouldn't marry your own kind right but right. it just puts like an interesting mix to the to the story yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> so would you say uh filipinas are uh, i mean a lot of them are educated right in the philippines like would they even want to come to the u.s if they have a great life in the philippines right so so uh a chunk of that um the the group that i'm telling you that are open to finding love are those who have traveled and that those who have maybe studied have worked abroad and some of them have really established like a really good life in the Philippines. Like they run their own business, not everyone, but like a, a, a good um, chunk of that one. Um, I feel like Filipinas are hopeless romantic by nature. And so even if, and I'm not speaking for everyone, but at least for the people that I know and I've worked with, I feel like if they are totally convinced that you are the one for them, everything is negotiable everything and that includes the relocation so um i'm just like for example basing it from my personal experience like even if you have this whole thing going on at some point of, of a filipina who wants to be a mom would want to be a mom and focus to be a mom and so even if they have they're building their empire and all that once they have decided to have a family um, I feel like they would be wherever the, the husband would be. And um, 
that's again that's not for everyone but for the people at least that I've worked with who has made finding love a priority for them so um it would be like a if they feel like you are really the one I mean this could be negotiable but also Philippines is not like a bad place to kind of do your retirement and like start a life I we- know I know yeah it's- one, one of one of the things that I've missed uh, back in the Philippines when I was working in the U.S. is like you don't have to be rich to have like a support system wherein you have people cooking for you, um, doing your laundry, driving for you and all that because our labor is very cheap, right? So when you're like racing and I, f- I feel like I'm talking for myself here, like I feel like when I'm going to raise like a, like a child, it'll be kind of good to kind of stay here for a while because you have that support system to kind of help look after that child but when they're growing up um, the education system in the in america is one of the things that a lot of filipinos are looking forward and have like admiration towards so it could be like um, they start here for a bit and then move to america but i'm just saying they're open to relocation if they're convinced that you're the one for them i love it i love it so what other tips can you give a nice foreign man who comes to the Philippines wanting to meet someone amazing? Like, what are some tips that you can uh, share with them? Right, so um, for those who are um, wanting to find love in the Philippines, um, this is something that I'm, I will be sharing with you. And this may be a stereotype, but this is like something that some of the Filipinas have at the back of their mind. When they see an American, they, they have this um, stereotype wherein, oh, um, he's kind of used to getting what he wants overnight. And so maybe when you initially meet them, the Filipinas wall is up because they're thinking, oh, maybe like he's expecting to kiss on the first date. Maybe he's expecting to sleep with like on a third date. And so I would suggest for you to kind of like give her like that space and make her feel that I'm that I'm willing to wait. I'm willing to wait until you warm up. I'm I'm not going to be, I'm not like a hit, I'm not a hit and run, like give them a, a like a kind of like a, a date or like a time wherein, hey, I'll be here for a little while. Because if you stay here for a little while, that gives you like a higher chance of finding someone to love. Then you just come here for like three days and then you go back. Of course, like it's kind of difficult to warm up and with you if you're only staying here for three days, right? So first is um, give them like ample of time. Tell them that you're willing to wait if you really like them. And second is um, tell them that you are open to either bringing them there or relocating in the Philippines. Because whether you want to take her or you want to relocate to the Philippines in the future, it doesn't matter. The options, giving them that they have, giving them the feeling that they have options really matters because like one of the things that we have been conditioned growing up is, you know, like if, if that person wants it overnight, then they're not worth it. But if that person is like willing to stick to, to um, um, stick around for a bit, get to know you slowly, then like um, the chance of them developing that emotions for them is like um, higher. So it's like that. Just um, tell them, like give them options and kind of tell them that you're kind of there for them to stay. So that time aspect is very important. Is um, one of the stereotypes that I've grown up with um, being around other Filipinas and Filipinos, would you say that the um culture in the philippines the filipino the men do they cheat a lot or is that just something that i've come across as a stereotype like what is your opinion on that so are we talking about the filipino filipino men mm-hmm. yeah. all right so so for the filipino men i've heard about these um instances wherein um there's a lot of stories that are coming from like seafarers wherein um, they have like a lover in the Philippines and they go travel, they'll be gone for months. And as like what the joke says, like for every port that they go to, they have like a new lover, right? <laughs> so I feel like this this is not like representative of all seafarers or, or of all those people who are traveling, but there's a truth in it because proximity 
is very important and we have what we call like the mere exposure effect wherein the more we are exposed to a certain person we kind of tend to like them more so imagine if you're away from your significant other and you've been meeting other people and you've been seeing other people sometimes that longing for that connection either emotional and physical might may be redirected to whoever is closer to you right so the cheating thing really happens i wouldn't say it happens to or it is like something that a filipino guy would do but given the distance um, people who are in a long distance relationship is of course higher um, the likelihood of of the cheating to happen is higher so um, I feel like Filipinos are um, loyal to the ones that they love. But if they're not serious um, with you, it's very easy to cheat. <laughs> so what are some amazing things about visiting the Philippines that you love? Like, what are you what are some things that I would enjoy when I come to the Philippines? Because I've never been, but it's certainly on my bucket list. Right. So um, one of the many things that people would would um, come here for is, of course, more than the beaches, for sure, like you've heard about the the wonderful beaches that, you know, um, non um, foreign nationals could come and explore. We also have this um, culture of they say is like this smiling, welcoming culture, wherein like when you come here, the, the respect and again, the admiration for Americans is there. So it's very seldom that you will meet like a rude Filipino or Filipina. Like they would always be welcoming to you. Even if the drivers, even if the, the, the vendors on the street, even if they don't know how to speak in English, they will try to speak in English for you because they want to be able to connect with you. And again, I think it's very, it's going to be effortless for a lot of Ameri for, for Americans to come here because there's that instant admiration already for, for the Americans. So I feel like you guys will have a lot of um, fun time cam coming here, not only like exploring um, a lot of tourist destinations, but really like meeting people. You would meet like really like amazing people coming from the, those people who are coming from the province and those people who have a chance of traveling, but still like are based in the Philippines. So we, I've, somebody told me like the Philippines is the melting pot and I feel like I agree and it's just that that kind of theory is just getting stronger and stronger as years go because you'd see a lot of different um culture as well here yeah okay one last question before I let you leave I know that the age difference of dating men between women is okay being pretty high so I know we talked a little bit off camera but would you say the Filipinas, the women are pretty open about big age differences and what is a big age difference and what is no big deal? Right. So I do agree with you that some of the um, Filipinas are open to dating someone who's like older than them just because of the the expectation or that you know, that assumption that if they're older, they're more mature. If there's one thing that Filipino women are looking for, it's really that um, maturity, stability. And of course, like for general, as women, we're looking for that sort of security, emotionally, financially, and all that aspect. And so um, when you meet somebody who's like older than you, you kind of like think that, hey, maybe they are more experienced. They are more um emotionally regulated maybe they are more you know patient they have learned their lesson the wisdom is there so if you like if you're a woman on your 20s i feel like they're open to dating like people even up to their early 40s or late 30s but um for women on their 30s i would say that uh, i'm sorry women on their 20s i would say that it's um it's it's acceptable to kind of date people on their 30s, right? But when you are on their 30s, you could go as far as like 50. That does not matter. It really depends upon like what you want to happen moving forward. But I'm just uh, like talking from, from um, for example, the talking from personal experience and the clients that I've been with, um, if that woman that you're dating is on their 30s, they're pretty open to dating somebody up to their um, 50 plus. But if they're like um, someone like more than that, I feel like age does not really, really matter here. But what matters is 
can they do can they still do the activity with me are they still fit enough to kind of like travel with me because there's also a big um, traveling culture in the philippines but um yeah so the dating differ the dating difference is not like a very big deal here because again we have that um, natural like hopeless hopeless romantic side in us that you know if love comes whatever form culture or age you are in if we connect with you and we find love with you then we're, we're open to it yeah I love it I love it well <laughs> Vanessa or aka coach V <clears throat> thank you so much for your wisdom your time your generous generous helpful tips uh would you have any last parting words or tips for the people and tell us how they would find you when they come over to the Philippines and they want to work with you. And of course I will enter all this in the show notes as well. Okay. Thank you very much, May. Um, it has been a pleasure and a dream to be part of your show. So, so this is my lucky day as I am with you and in your show. And I'd like to um, address um, my final thoughts to those who may be considering visiting or relocating in the Philippines. Um, I feel like um, there's Filipinos have a lot of love to give and whether they find someone in the Philippines or whether they find love with you who is a foreigner national um, trust in the fact that um, there are people who's just genuinely wanting to find that lifetime company and of course when you come here it's not perfect there are also crazy ones who will try to kind of like you know get that short-term benefits from you but the key here is to kind of understand the culture understand the difference between who are the the people who wants to to find love and who are the people who wants to use you so i would recommend really um to talking to like a dating coach like me or working with agencies like us singles events manila to kind of understand the dating culture here before you jump into it because um, there's a lot of things that you should know that are not yet on the internet or you couldn't read in books so um, go work with a dating coach before you come here and at the same time if you don't want to go through all these apps and you want to kind of meet people who are vetted come work with singles events manila we are a matchmaking and dating agency we not only do matchmaking but we run social clubs and we have singles events every week online and offline we are very um, committed to helping find um, helping people find love easily for those who are serious in finding love so you can find us at singles events manila on facebook and instagram and i also give a lot of science-based dating tips on my tiktok and instagram that is date coach v date coach v on instagram and tiktok may thank you again and i hope to see you soon in the philippines <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, V. This was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun chatting with you. And ladies, if you're out there listening and want to meet a great guy, please go to my website, twoasianmatchmakers.com, fill out a profile. Love for you to be part of my Rolodex. And men, if you're looking to find a lovely Asian woman in the US or in the Philippines, I suggest you contact us or contact V, and then we'll start to help you. So thank you very much. Bye, V. Bye.